Hello, it's Ben here, and today we're looking at a task one IELTS essay. It's a bar graph. And a bit of a weird one. I mean, when you look at it, um, it kind of stands out that it's comparing two things. So figures for males and females, how much leisure time they enjoy in a typical week. So how much free time they have, basically. In... I guess um, either a one year or two year period, depending on how you interpret this, but yeah, a time in the past. And it's looking at various employment statuses, um, which is including unemployed as a status for employment. So kind of general employment situations. And what kind of stands out is that you're kind of missing bars here and here. Uh, sorry, here and here. There's only one bar, which is for females. So it kind of needs a bit of critical thinking. Why is that the case? Um, well, let's say that um, they do a survey and they survey 100 people. So there's 100 participants or respondents. Uh, it might be the case that um, they chose like 50 men and 50 women and they asked them, what's your current employment situation for these men and women? And maybe, you know, 40%, uh, sorry, 40 men said that they were working full time five were currently unemployed and five were retired and just none, none said that they were working part-time or they were uh, working as a house husband. So it could just be something like a small sample size. A hundred people and 50 men would be a really small sample. We don't, we don't know that, so we just have to be careful with our words. Just say that we don't, we don't have any data provided for men for two. Um, but there might be a little bit of a clue. Housewives is usually used for women. Uh, we might say something else like house husband for a man who does the same uh, role. And um, if we're talking about men and women, we might say something like homemaker or something. So uh, that's what is required. Yeah, we're going to compare these, um, these figures for men and women. And we should probably mention the fact that we don't have uh, figures for both in all cases. I would suggest you take a look at the essay on your own. Think about what score you would give it and then see how that score compares to mine. So if you like, you can pause the video at this point for each of the slides. This is the first slide. And the second. And the third and last. Uh, it's a little bit small, but these are the, uh, the band descriptors, so the examiner will assess you using these basic criteria. Um, and this is the public version. So this is the version that anyone can access. The public is you and me. Um, so all you need to do is Google search for band descriptors, IELTS, writing, and make sure you're looking at task one rather than task two. It's a little bit small. Um, depending on your screen size, uh, if you're using your phone, for example. But uh, when we talk about it together, I'll zoom in. In the meantime, if you can uh, print it or something, that might be helpful, or just take a look uh, and zoom in on the, on the website, or if you download the PDF. So I'll take a look. I'll tell you what score I would give it. 
The chart illustrates the average amounts of leisure time possessed weekly by men and women of five different employment statuses. Says what they are from 1988 to 1999. Yeah, it's kind of more like in um, that period um, rather than looking at separate data for both years, but it's kind of uh, okay enough, I think. Average amounts of time, yep, that they possessed, yep, good word. Um, there's nothing that desperately needs to be changed there. It's pretty good. Uh, from memory, this one might be a rewrite, so um, the quality is pretty high at times. Overall, it's clear that males had more leisure time than females in the period given. Again, nothing that needs changing, I think. Nice um, overall summary. Men more, men more, men more. Both males and females spent the most time at leisure. Oh, this is definitely a rewrite because that is language I would use. Spend time at leisure means uh, available, not working or studying when they were unemployed or retired. And the smallest amounts of leisure time were enjoyed by both genders when they were employed full time. Yeah, good. I could argue maybe people of both genders would be slightly better, but um, it's pretty much okay, I think. Furthermore, males were not part of the data for either employed part-time workers or housewives. Yeah, if you say furthermore, it kind of sounds like you're adding a point. Um, and it's not really adding another general trend. It's more just mentioning something that we have to keep in mind. So I might change this one. should be noted that males were not part of the data for either employed part-time workers or housewives. In the case of the unemployed and retired, women enjoyed about 75 hours of leisure time per week, as opposed to men with 85 hours. I like that it's trying to use something different with as opposed to, because um, it's a less common connective, um, which could be a very impressive part of um, cohesion and uh, coherence, sorry. Um, it would be a kind of cohesive device. But um, for me, it's probably not perfectly accurate. If you say as opposed to, um, it's kind of similar to rather than. Like... Um, let me think of an example. So, people in my country usually watch movies at home. As opposed to the cinema. So it just shows that I am um, kind of highlighting that um, they do it at this rather than at this. I'm trying to compare these two things. It could be on a phone or something like that. But uh, in this case, I'm kind of making comparisons between watching movies at home and the cinema. And I can use as opposed to. It works best when there are only two choices, I guess. Um, but I still kind of like it because it's um, it's not the perfect choice, but it's still very smooth um, and grammatically correct, even if the meaning might not be perfect. And I like that it's trying to do something different. Um, so it's not, it's not kind of perfect, but it's a really good effort. Students have to try to be adventurous because it's all about using a wide range. And if you're a little bit off, like here, it's not always a huge deal. I mean, you know, it's not like 
it's either completely right or completely wrong. You can be like nearly right. It, it, it is language that's for drawing a comparison for kind of... Um, for two, two things like, you know, watching a movie at home or at the cinema. And it, it's trying to do that for two things like men and women and free time they have. It's, it's so close to being right that I see it as kind of almost a positive thing, if that makes sense. Um, it's better than, much, much better than just using the same words and phrases repeatedly, um, which would get a low score. So you do have to kind of be brave sometimes, if that makes sense. Uh, similarly, similarly, when employed full-time, males spent around 10 hours more at leisure than females at 45 hours weekly. Uh, I don't think I changed anything there. Uh, I did, sorry. With 45 hours weekly. Um might be slightly better yes so it's not red it's not a mistake but when we say at to give a figure it's usually when we're just giving uh, no other information except for the figure so saying something was the highest figure at that time at 5.5%. But here it's more like uh, with men enjoying 45 hours weekly. So that's when I tend to use with rather than have when it's kind of giving a bit more data, uh, sorry, giving a bit more detail, if that kind of makes sense. Um, this figure was, well, the figure we're looking at now, so we could say is, I suppose. Um, but there is an issue with tense for the next part. So on the other hand, in the case of part-time employees and housewives, data are only provided for females. Yeah, understanding that data is actually a plural noun, which a lot of people get wrong. So data are is correct. Singular is datum. Uh, you'll look very impressive if you do that. So I can tell this is a rewrite from the student, definitely. Data are only provided for females. So this is where the tense issue is. We're talking about the past females who were working part-time. That's just a little typo, hit the wrong key. Have approximately half of the leisure time enjoyed by females who were not working at that time. And actually, the rest is is pretty nice using language that I like to make comparisons. Over 40 hours of leisure time was available weekly to housewives, which was slightly more than the corresponding figure for full-time working males. You could argue that it's were available because the unit is hours, which is countable. But we're talking about free time, so time is uncountable. So uh, I think it's, it's a very small issue. I'll stick with that was. Um, but yes, yeah, slightly more than the corresponding figure for full-time working males. That's quite nice. What did I give this? I basically gave it um, eight for everything. Um, and eight overall, uh, obviously. So... I just felt it was very good. It never felt like, um, I suppose, a native speaker who would go into a bit more detail, like fully developed response, because um, for a native speaker who's very academic um, and writing, you know, with a very kind of high quality writing style at university, um, the speed with which they can write and the language they can use is obviously going to be very high and it might just be a bit more detail. If I were going to um, address this question, I might 
even, uh, you know, write 300 words or something, something like that. And it would be no problem because of um, my background and experience and education level and all those kinds of things. But um, for a non-native speaker, it is a very good response that maybe I wouldn't call fully developed, um, but I would call very well developed. Um, and for cohesion and coherence, sequences, information, and ideas logically, um, I think, yeah, it does that pretty well. Um, but I wouldn't say in a way that attracts no attention, which is obviously, again, going to be a high-level native writer um, for things like uh, connecting the language and paragraphing and things like that. Like here, for example, uh, forgive me, it's not really on the other hand. If you're switching from discussing men to women, for example, that might be possibly on the other hand. But when you're going from uh, some of the employment situations to other ones, there's no real need to contrast them in that way. Uh, you could do working people like full-time workers and part-time workers, and on the other hand, um, people who weren't employees. That would kind of make sense, but there, not so much. Um, and yeah, you know, s just small things like the use of furthermore we've talked about. Um, I'm being a bit picky, but just the overall feeling is it's not in a way that attracts no attention. I'm, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to writing. I've, al I've always been a very, very, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I've always been a very, very talented writer, even since I was a child. And um, I took that to a very high level uh, when I was at university, kind of uh, in, in my prime writing academic essays. And um, I am very critical of writing from other people as well as my own writing. And again, for um, lexical resource, wide range of vocab fluently and flexibly to convey precise meanings. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, aid is still very high, but for me, it would be slightly more natural and sophisticated um, to get that nine score. Um, again, I would just personally develop it slightly more and maybe um, give a bit more detail and my word count might be slightly higher as it tends to be for the, the ones that do get nine, which is very rare. Um, and the grammar. Majority of sentences are error free, but it's not um, full accuracy, which would be required for nine, uh, because there are these tense issues, for example. So overall, it's very good. Um, if it wants to get those nine ones, you know, there are some issues with uh, cohesion and coherence. We talked about this. We talked about this. There are some issues with the uh, the grammar, minus slips like these. Um, and if you look at it, the length, you can see quite quickly that it deals with it well, but it's not extensively discussed in the, uh, the level of detail. There aren't too many sentences in the, the body parts. But even so, it, it, it deals with the, the requirements very, very, very well and gets a very high score. I wonder how closely your scoring match with mine. I'd be curious to know, so please feel free to, uh, to post your uh, opinions in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and uh, that's all from me.